so, so yeah. you're winning an, a, a, a national competition like that. Do, 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 as a family, you think that's it? We've made it, you know, Hollywood, or what? What goes for you when, when you win? What What happens? The phones ring, or <laughs> that's really what happened. Um, you know, you come back and you're, and I'm thinking, oh, um, I'm gonna go back to school and just be a normal kid. And literally, after it aired and I won, um. I started getting all kinds of phone calls and they were all from record labels. Wow. So yeah, it was everything from CBS records at the time. And then it was Capitol. Um, I'm trying to think Columbia records. Um, yeah, it was like several different record companies. They were all calling and then they were saying, Hey, we'd like, you know, to fly you out and audition for the labels. And once again, as, you know, when I, when I sit here now and I think about that, it is pretty, it's pretty wild because things are done so differently now (laughs) that I think it's, it was a lot scarier then because it, it, to get a deal it was based on so many different parameters, like to get an actual record deal. It was, you had to do like jump through hoops to get mm-hmm. a record deal. And at that age, even, um, I mean, at that point I was 11 years old, labels were interested but at the same time they were like well, what are we going to do with an 11 year old like that was always the thing what do, how do you market yeah. an 11 year old female without making her hypersexualized or um trying to like develop the artist mm-hmm. so that you know she continues to grow with her audience and people watch the evolution of this artist mm-hmm. that was part of the challenge um, so when I went, you know, to Capitol and I went to studio a, which is like, you know, the studio where the Beatles performed mm. Billy holiday sang in that studio. And so I literally thought I was going to pass out when I walked <laughs> in there. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is my life right now. Couldn't imagine. I was just like, this, this can't be happening. And I sang in the studio in front of these executives and they were just like, you know, super impressed. And so then it became the, the uh, battle of who's going to get this young girl, who's she going to sign to and who's going to have the better deal. And um, at that point uh, for me, it was, I didn't really know who I was or what type of artist I wanted to be. Mm. I knew who inspired me, but I also knew I couldn't go around and um, be Diana Ross at 11 years old. (laughs) I don't know if that would have read well or how that would have come off, how people would have perceived that. So it was, it was tough. It was, it it was definitely tough in the beginning trying to figure out how, where do I fit in and how do we do this? And, and at that time I, I'd heard of Shanice being signed uh, mm-hmm. to her label as well. And they were holding on to her because they weren't sure how to, I think, market her in the beginning too. It was just like, what do you do with these young girls? Oh. You know, it's different now, but yeah, at that time it was just, it was, you know, the labels were run by so many men. Everyone yeah. I was surrounded by were mostly men. I, I didn't encounter too many women in the beginning um, when I, was signed so yeah you have all these men trying to make decisions for a child yeah like i don't know what i would (laughs) right i just want to you like sing (laughs) yeah whose idea was it to sign with capital because you had your manager you had your dad i mean why did they choose capital Uh, why did they accept capital capital was the most persistent and for me it was the history. I just kept thinking about all of the, 
you know, the rich history of Capitol Records and all the talent that had walked through those doors. And I wanted my name to be a part of that. Wow. So you think of the Beatles or you think of Billie Holiday, then it's like, and then there's Tracy Spencer. Like, I was like, if I can be in that that group, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. And they did have, they, you know, worked really hard in creating um, a really great or like bringing a really great offer to the table because I in the beginning you know yeah they really really believed in me and they were like we're really going to try and see if we can make this happen we we want to do this so yeah I, I, mean, I think one of the questions I think one of the things that I, I, I had learned a lot from a lot of artists from the 90s was the signing without knowing the fine prints of the business side um being that Capital were very persistent with signing you and you had a manager and your, and your dad around, were you guys giving um, a better business deal or did, um, you know, were they just said sign here and you just like, you know, 10 years later, like, oh, what did we just sign? How was it at that stage? Um, thankfully, no. That I didn't look back and go, oh my God, I'm I, like, they totally screwed me. <laughs> no, I did right away get a really good attorney to to come in. Um, I said, you or your parent? I mean, because you're, you're just 11, so I'm just wondering what you said I did, I got. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> that, that would be my parents doing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they we would have these discussions because obviously I didn't know, <laughs> but they also were, they would never do anything or have these discussions without including me because they okay. wanted me to know and learn, that yeah. part of it. And to, yeah, exactly. And to learn about the business side of the music business, obviously at 11, part of that, you know, I wasn't that interested in the business. <laughs> <side>. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, okay, let's just sign something. Let's <laughs> do this. But my dad was like, no, it's just, it's not that that simple so yeah no um i do remember that it, it, um, there was a lot of negotiating going back and forth for a while it was okay. not a one and done deal um always leaving an option for me to to get out if okay. uh you know for whatever reasons like not to feel for me to be trapped right. um, into a contract and always going into after, you know, so many years or after each album, being able to renegotiate and into a new deal, that whole thing. So, yeah, no, I definitely, people can say a lot of negative things about record labels and Granite Capital definitely had their ups and downs because I think I went through so many different presidents while I was there yeah um before putting an album in the middle of an album it'd be like oh by the way there's a new president of your label <laughs> yeah. I start to like this guy like what's going on yeah. he come in with a new agenda yeah and you know new thoughts wanting it to you because they want to put their stamp on it so they're like yeah. eh, we're not going to do it there we're going to do it this way so that wasn't a joy yeah going through that um but yeah uh they never made me feel trapped okay. is what i never participated in that category kind of right, somewhere in between or even loving us on which i didn't miss you what was it like growing up it is I mean, I was, I, I love, I love all different genres. 